What's going on my baby dragon squad? I got another deck profile for you guys here today, courtesy of Circuit Break releasing the new crawler archetype. It's an insect archetype and I think it's gonna be really, really fun. It's a relatively budget deck. You guys can build it quite easily. Pretty much all the cards are commons, rares, and maybe a couple super rares for the core of the deck. You guys can make it quite easily. We're going to get into it at the end of this video. If you guys happen to enjoy it and want to support the channel, make sure you guys are enabling that notification bell to become part of Baby Dragon Squad below so you guys can see my videos when I post them so you're never late to the party. And then make sure you guys check out that giveaway link as well as my Patreon link down below. You guys can win some cool rewards as well as getting some brand new uh, random mats, cards, etc. from the channel. So uh, let's get into it, boys. Uh, this is Crawlers. It is a 42 card deck. I've been messing around with it and uh, it's actually pretty fun. So first and foremost, to explain Crawlers, there's actually quite a few monsters. I'm going to lay out all the monsters here so you guys can actually see them. First off, we have three Crawler Spines, three Crawler Axons, three Crawler Gleal or Gliles. Um, let's see. Next we have three Crawler Receptor. We have triple crawler dendrite and then we only have two crawler ranvier so uh, crawler monsters basically to explain them simply they're all level two insect monsters with varying stats some of them are kind of better than the others but for the most part their stats are pretty mediocre and essentially what they all have is one effect in common so uh, the first effect that they have in common is that whenever they're they go from the field to the grave by your opponent's card effect while they're in your control you get to actually special summon crawler monsters from your uh, from your deck and face down defense position with different names. You can summon two of them, which is really, really cool. So if your opponent activates something like Dark Hole when you have one of these guys face up on the field, you can special summon any two other guys uh, onto your field and face down defense position. So they're essentially floaters in that regard. Now they all have that effect in common, but what makes each of these cards unique is that they each have their own individual unique flip effect. So uh, when Crawler's Spine is flipped face up, he allows you to target a monster on the field and destroy it. Crawler Axon allows you to target a spell or a trap card on the field, destroy it. Glyle allows you to special summon a crawler monster from your hand or graveyard and face up attack or face down defense position, except itself. Uh, crawler uh, Receptor allows you to actually Stratos any crawler monster out of your deck, uh, including itself, which is kind of cool. Dendrite actually allows you to send a monster from your deck to the graveyard, which is really important because you can actually Foolish Burial any monster with his effect, including Glow Up Bulb, which we do play in this deck. And then Ranvier is the only one we play as a two of because he's probably the weakest one out of all of them. Uh, he's only really good mid to late game, and he allows you, when he gets flipped up, to target two Crawler monsters in your grave, add them to your hand. You could theoretically even cut him to one, it's just that I wanted more names into the deck, and there aren't any other Crawler monsters in the main deck, or in the, in the TCG that are released yet. So I'm only playing two of him. He's not that great, just because when you draw them early game, you don't really have many crawler monsters in your grave to get his first effect off. So all these monsters are really uh, great. You really need all their effects uh, in the deck because of their names, and they allow you to pretty much float and make link monsters. This is essentially a link deck, and they're all level two, so you're pretty much gonna be making either rank two XYZs, or you're gonna be making uh, a couple synchros, or predominantly your link crawler monsters along with other link monsters in this deck. Uh, next, this deck is complemented very well by World Legacy cards, uh, so we're running Double World Legacy World Armor. This card's actually really cool. It's a level 7 monster. If you wanted to, you could run some rank 7s in the extra deck or potentially a level 8 synchro monster to make use of the Glow Bulb, which we also play. But this card's really cool because it's a 25 by 2500 beat stick, and it basically says when a monster is flip summoned, you can actually special, special summon it from your hand, and then you can add a uh, World Legacy card from your deck to your hand uh, if it's normal or special summoned. And then in addition to that, if it's ever normal or special summon, it gains the quick effect where it allows you to bounce itself and one of your opponent's extra deck monsters uh, that's face up and you can actually bounce them back to the hand. So you'll bounce this back and you'll bounce the extra deck monster. So it's kind of like having a compulsory evacuation device and you can keep reusing this over and over and over. It's a really cool effect. And then in addition to that, you're also able to search two of the world legacy cards, one being the field spell and one being the trap card, which we also play in the deck. I'll show you guys those in a brief minute. Uh, this card's kind of cool. You don't really want to play three of it just because you don't want to open multiples of this. So we're only playing two of it. Uh, it's a really cool beat stake. You can use it to do, pull off some really cool combos. And uh, the fact you can just bounce some you know, monsters that you can't normally deal with is a great aspect to this card. 
Next, we run one glow bulb. Uh, glow bulb, I actually don't like this card that much, but I saw a lot of people trying it out. You can actually use this to make Naturia Beast. Uh, for a while, I was trying Cyframe Lord Omega, but the extra deck is actually really tight for this deck, so I'm not sure how I want to use that. I was even trying the Ravine Destrudo combo in the main deck. That's another variant I'll probably show you guys down the line. Uh, but in this version, I'm not using it. I'm only using Glow Bulb as my predominant tuner. Uh, but if you are playing Cyphrum later, Cyphrum Lord Omega, you can use these two to make a level eight. But Glow Bulb can be sent from the deck to the grave very easily with Crawlodendrite, as I mentioned earlier. And then you can, you know, use this excavate the top card of your deck and either Synchro for Nat Beast if it's in your graveyard, or you can use Glow Bulb just for extra Link fodder. So uh, Glow Bulb, it's okay. It's not really great to draw. That's probably the one aspect I don't really like about this card. It's a brick uh, when you draw it. So other than that. Uh, Glow Bulb is kind of just subpar, but it is kind of needed in this deck. Natria Beast can win you some games. Uh, next, I do run one Blackwing, Go for the Vague Shadow. This is actually for the new Forbidden and Limited list. Obviously, Spirals being hit, uh, quote unquote hit for the most part is, uh, you know, also resulted in Gofu going to one, just like the OCG. Uh, this is a Link dominant deck, so it's a very Link focused deck. So Blackwing Gofu was definitely something I wanted to include in this deck. Uh, you can make that instant Link 3 using his tokens, and uh, you can do some really cool plays with him. Uh, he's kind of bad to draw after, you know, as the game goes on, but especially once you have an established board. Uh, but other than that, it, it's, it's there when you need it. So I do like Gofu. It's another card you could potentially cut if you wanted to. The deck is 42 cards right now, the way I have it set up. Um, but I am running Pot of Desires, which you guys will see shortly, so uh, that's why I wanted to run a couple more cards in the deck. So for hand traps, I'm only running Triple Ash Blossom and one Max C. These are kind of just staple hand traps right now. Uh, probably the best hand traps in general, the most generic ones, since Spirals are taking quite a bit of a hit, so it's probably not necessary to main deck stuff like Triple Draw and Lock or, you know, the, the Cyframe stuff or, you know, Ghost Ogre, stuff like that. So these are the most safe picks, in my opinion, short, sweet, and to the point. Next, we go into the spells. For the spells, we use the Field Spell, which is World Legacy in Shadow. So this card is the card you can actually search with World Armor. And it's a really cool Field Spell. And we actually use this card. It says it allows you to have all your uh, Crawler Monsters gain 300 attack and defense. And then once per turn, you can actually special summon a level two or lower insect monster from your hand uh, in face up or face down defense position. And when your flip summon monster, or when your flip monster is destroyed by battle by an opponent's monster, you can actually send that opponent's monster to the graveyard. So this card has uh, three cool effects. The first effect isn't actually all that um, relevant, the, the boost attack, but it can come up uh, when you're dealing damage with your crawlers. So that first boost effect is okay, but the second and third effect are probably where this card really shines, especially the second effect where it basically gives you that extra summon uh, for turn, and that's really, really important. Uh, you can actually use that as many times <laughs> in terms of having uh, multiples of these, which is really cool. And then finally, if your opponent happens to just run your monsters over, because you're, all, your, all your crawler monsters, they have very weak stats, so if you just happen to have a bunch of these on the field and your opponent's just feeling like they, they want to have a field day and kill them, uh, by battle, well, their oppo your opponent's monster is actually going to go to the graveyard, uh, and, it, and it sends that monster. It doesn't destroy it, which is kind of important. And uh, in addition to that, this card's quite easy to get into with your World Chalice card, uh, with your World Armor, and then I'm also running three Terraformings to search it. Like I said, you could also utilize, um, you know, Ravine with Destrudo. I just couldn't find room in the main deck. I didn't want to go above 42 cards uh, with this deck. But this is really important. You really want to see this card early on because this is the card that allows you to get all those insect monsters out of your hand onto the field as quickly as possible to Link Summon. Uh, next, for some draw power and speed, I'm running Triple Pot of Desires. I'm running three of this uh, in a 42 card deck, so it shouldn't be an issue. I, I probably, if I was running, if I was running 40 cards, uh, I'd probably only run two of these in the main deck for the most part. Uh, but this card is pretty good. You just need that consistency. And then I'm running Double Scapegoat. Scapegoat's actually pretty cool. Uh, you can use this during the end phase for some shenanigans, as well as making Link Monsters on your turn. So you can use this defensively by setting it. If your opponent's trying to kill you, you can Scapegoat, get some free tokens, and then you'll stay alive. And whatever's left over, you can use to Link. Or during your end phase, you can simply activate Scapegoat, gain four tokens on your field, and then you can make stuff like Mysis Radiant, Proxy Dragon, etc., etc. So Scapegoat's really cool in this deck. Uh, it's a very Link-oriented deck, as I said earlier, so you definitely want to be using a card like Scapegoat. And I don't want to play three of this simply because uh, I don't want to see multiples of it going second and my opening hand, or even going first opening hand. Uh, game two and three, I would probably recommend siding one of these out, depending on if you're going first or second. Uh, the last couple spells I use are one Soul Charge. Soul Charge is great when you make all your Link monsters and then you can just activate this, bring back all your Crawler monsters, and then just make a bunch of Links with them. So Soul Charge is really good in any Link, uh, link based deck, so that's why I use it in here. And then the final two spells I use are one Dark Hole, one Regeki as some board wipes. This deck can struggle against established boards sometimes, so uh, Regeki, Dark Hole are your instant outs for that. 
And then finally, the last three cards in the deck are actually trap cards. We're using three World Legacy Pawns. So this is actually a continuous trap, and much like your World Legacy in Shadow, you can search this card uh, with World Armor, which is really, really cool. And it's actually a, a trap that allows you to have quite a few effects. So it has two important effects. So the first one is that you can actually target a face down monster you control, and you can change it to face up or face down, uh, face up or uh, attack position or face up uh, defense position. So it's cool in that regard because you can manipulate your monsters, the, the flip monsters effects, to get off your uh, crawler monsters effects. And then if you're if they're face up, your opponent can like attack them, and you just use it to put them face down. Um, in general, so uh, actually, excuse me, it doesn't put them face down. So if they're face down, uh, you can put them face up and attack your defense position. So when your opponent's attacking uh, a face down one, you can flip it and get its effects and do some cool stuff. Uh, like for instance, if you have a crawler spine on the field and you want to keep him on the field, uh, you can simply activate World Legacy Pawns and you can flip him face up. And he has 2100 defense, which is cool, but his effect will go off, which will allow you to destroy your opponent's monster. Uh, also, you can use this in conjunction with Axon, which is really cool. If your opponent is playing something like a Diagram or a Spiral Resort or any other card you want to deal with, any of the Magician's uh, Pendulum cards or any of their uh, Continuous cards, you can use World Legacy Pawns, flip this guy face up, and then you'll be able to actually destroy uh, their spells and traps before they have a chance to use them during their turn without necessarily waiting for them to attack. So World Legacy Pawns is really cool in that regard. It allows you to get your effects off during their turn when you want to, uh, as opposed to having to wait for your opponent or having to wait uh, for your turn to actually manually flip them or use any of the other card effects. And then finally, you can actually use this card to shuffle a crawler monster from your graveyard into your main deck and then target a face-up monster you control and change it to face-down defense position. So that's actually really cool. You can only use one World Legacy Pawns effect per turn and only once that turn, so keep that in mind. Uh, but that's, that other effect is really cool because it's almost kind of like having uh, an infinite recycle aspect of this deck. You can pretty much recycle all your crawler monsters all at the same time while being able to actually uh, put your monsters face down so uh, it's a really cool aspect of this card this allows you to flip stuff face up and flip it face down and put cards back so it's a really interesting trap card uh, I would highly encourage you guys to use three of this card uh, next we'll go on to the extra deck the extra deck is actually quite tight it took me a while to actually find what I thought was a pretty optimal extra deck uh, so we're gonna get into it so first and foremost uh, there's three crawler link monsters there's crawler Neurogos Crawler Synaphyses and Crawler Qualiarach? I'm not even going to try and say these guys' names. They're really absurd. I run 2 2 1, uh, and I'll explain why. So they each have a very similar effect, much like the actual Crawler monsters in the main deck. And their effects are as follows. So uh, each of them basically allow you to give monsters a boost, uh, 300 attack and defense, your Crawler monsters. And then in addition to that, they all have the effect where, for instance, if they say if uh, they have if these guys point to a certain crawler mo if crawler to crawler monsters you have they give them certain aspects. So for instance, this one uh, Narogos, he says the crawler monsters he points to can't be destroyed by battle, and they gain 300 attack and defense. And if they battle an opponent's monster, any battle damage they inflict to your opponent is doubled. And then if this face-up card ends up being destroyed by battle or leaves the field because of an opponent's card effect. Uh, while it's in your possession, you're able to target two crawler monsters with different names in your grave and special them in face down defense position. That effect actually goes across all these guys. So Synapses also allows you, if he happens to be destroyed by battle or leaves the field because of an opponent's card effect, while you have it, you can actually special summon two crawler monsters in face down defense position. But what makes him different is that instead of just protecting your monsters also by battle and giving them the boost, instead of dealing double damage when it your crawler monsters that he points to uh, battle, what he actually allows you to do is it can make monsters uh, attack twice during each battle phase. So any of the monsters, uh, any crawler monsters you have he, that he points to, you can, if you, for instance, have Narogos and Synapses on the field, it'll allow him to actually attack up to twice, and then he'll also allow uh, this guy to inflict double damage to your opponent. So these guys are really cool. They have 1800 and 1900 attack, which means uh, when you have both of them on the field, your monsters can do quite a bit of damage just putting out two of these monsters out on the field. You'll be dealing double damage and you'll be able to attack twice, uh, which is really, really cool. You can put a ton of damage so, so easily on the board. And then finally, I only run one of this guy. I thought this guy would be a lot better, but uh, over time I thought he wasn't as good. Now, uh, the one thing that separates this guy from these two is these two guys point left and right, which means means if you bring them up here in your extra monster zone, uh, then you're not going to be able to access your other link monsters or extra deck monsters into your main monster zone because they don't point down. This guy is the only one that points down, uh, and they are a little bit different in the regard that this guy is only requires two insect monsters. 
He requires two earth monsters, much like Mysis Radiant, so he's probably the easiest one to make because you can also use like stuff like scapegoat tokens and uh, whatnot because he doesn't say accept tokens. And then this guy also requires two crawler monsters, so he's probably the hardest and most specific one to make. Um, but these two are kind of the same because you can use just insect monsters and crawler monsters are insects. So these two are kind of the easiest ones to make. This one is just technically a little bit harder to make. But he does point down diagonally, so it allows you to access your extra deck. And what he says is, again, if he's destroyed a battle or leaves the field because of opponent's card effect while well, you have him, you're able to special summon those two crawler monsters and face down defense. But then he allows you to apply effects based on the number of crawler monsters you have. So, for instance, if you have two or more crawler monsters, all monsters you have will gain that 300 attack and defense. So unlike these guys, that boost isn't built in. You actually have to have a certain amount of crawler monsters to gain that boost. And then if you have four or more crawler monsters, your opponent's card and effects can't be activated during the battle phase. So if you're going for a big push, uh, you want to make him. And then if you happen to have those four crawler monsters, then what you'll actually be able to do is prevent your opponent from doing any battle phase tricks, which is really, really cool. And then finally, if you have six or more crawler monsters, which is very, very rare, uh, what it'll actually, it, what it allows you to do is to allow your monsters to attack directly, which is quite important because um, that last effect says your monsters can attack directly. It's not just for crawlers. Uh, it's not just for monsters that it's linked to. So keep that in mind. That's the only time that effect can actually come up. But again, you're rarely going to ever have six crawler monsters out on the field. It's just, it's very rare with this deck unless you have something like Soul Charge. And then when you do Soul Charge, you're not going to be able to attack your opponent that turn because you have to skip your battle phase. So uh, I found that this was the best ratio. Uh, I tend to go into these two guys the most. I go into him the most sparingly. But uh, they're really cool. They actually keep in mind that uh, crawler monsters are all linked to monsters. So you can make them quite easily if you have insect monsters, uh, earth monsters, or crawler monsters, which crawlers are insects and they're all twos. So uh, these guys are quite e easy to make for the most part, uh, but definitely they, they kind of have their flaws in the fact that their effects aren't really that dynamic. So keep that in mind. Uh, next, I use one subterra behemoth fiendus. Some people use uh, one fiendus or uh, two fiendus. I just choose to use one. I don't go into it that frequently. Uh, he only requires two flip monsters, so any of your crawlers. He gains attack equal to the original levels of sub you used to make him, so that effect isn't going to come up because you're not playing sub -terrors. What he actually allows you to do is during your main phase, you can send a flip monster from your deck to your grave so you can Foolish Burial something. And then uh, after you Foolish Burial that Crawler monster, you're actually able to special summon a monster from your hand and face down defense position to a zone that he points to. And then you can use that effect once per turn, and then once per turn, if a card uh, he points to is flip face up, you get to add a flip monster from your deck or grave to your hand. So he's kind of cool in that regard. I like that special summon effect and the final effect uh, the most. He's pretty cool because he also points down, so you can make him very easily to access your extra deck uh, to get some of the monsters out of your hand. Next, I use one Mysis Radiant. You don't go into this as often as I thought you did because we have so many other Link 2s you can go into, uh, Fiendus and whatnot, but you do need this for like cards like Scapegoat and uh, whatnot, so uh, pretty good. You can do some unique plays there. One Proxy Dragon, obviously you need these guys for like Gofu and you know all the other cards. Obviously when we get Security Dragon, I believe Code Talker and whatnot, it'll be much, much better. So uh, you won't necessarily need to play these ratios, but uh, yeah, these are some important ones. I play one Akashic Magician. This only requires two monsters with the same type, except tokens. So you can't use like scapegoat tokens for this or your Gofu tokens. But what's important about her is you can make her, all your monsters pretty much are insects for your crawlers. So you can make her easily. And she's a new secret rare out of Circuit Break, which actually just allows you to, uh, when, when she's like something, you can turn all monsters she points to to the hand. So you could theoretically play the Grinder Golem stuff in here. I just don't think it's as good. And then once per turn, you're able to declare a card name and excavate the top card of your deck equal to the total rating of the Link Monsters co link to this. And then if you, you excavate that many cards, and then any if you excavated any of the cards that you declared, you add them to your hand. So that effect actually can come up. You can even call it wrong intentionally just to make sure you send crawler monsters to the graveyard. So her second effect is actually extremely relevant in this deck. Um, you could theoretically, if you really wanted to, like side deck Secret Village of the Spellcasters, also run that for terraforming. Because she is Spellcaster, which means you can lock your opponent out of their spells. Um, that is a concept that I've seen going around. For Link 3s, we run one Deco Talker as well as one in Grease Suit, you go into him quite easily as well. I'm not running Ib, but that effect to send stuff is pretty important. It's just a free out to a lot of the cards you, can, you can't normally deal with, such as Borload and whatnot. Uh, Firewall Dragon as a Link 4 and Borload Dragon himself. These cards are just uh, the only Link 4s I run. You go into these quite sparingly. I probably go into Borload a little bit more than Firewall just because uh, he's a win condition, whereas Firewall is more of a combo card. And if your opponent can stop your stuff, it kind of sucks because that kind of flops when, when that happens. 
The last two cards I use are one Phantom Knights, uh, the Cursed Phan the Phantom Knights, a Cursed Javelin. It's the only XYZ monster I use. It's a Link 2. Uh, it's a little bit better, in my opinion, than running like stuff like Sky Cavalry or any of the other ones because this is uh, much more versatile. You can use this against like ABCs and whatnot when they have like Buster and they're trying to use their effect on your turn. Um, just to like bait stuff out. It, it's usually just to bait those those types of effects out. Obviously, they'll still be able to play around uh, an effect like this, but this card's pretty cool. If your opponent has a monster, you can shrink it uh, basically to zero, and then it has its effects negated. And then you're also able to use this. Um, obviously, you can't use it during other player's turn just because you don't run other Phantom Knights cards, so you won't have a material for them. But you're able to detach material and do that to an opponent's monster. So he's kind of cool. He's versatile in that regard. Um, so it just baits stuff out. It's really That's really the only reason it's there for. I wanted to have at least one Link 2 in the deck. And then finally, the one Naturia Beast. This is for crawler, two Crawler Monsters plus Glow Up Bulb. So uh, that is the deck. I, I didn't build a side deck for you guys. Uh, the deck is a Link 2 base deck, but you can make a lot of other Link Monsters in here as well. It's a pretty fun deck. It's relatively cheap, believe it or not. The extra deck is probably the only place you'll kind of have to spend a little bit of money if you want to get stuff like Borload and Firewall Dragon. Uh, but these guys are pretty cool. I, I really like them because they're it's it's one of those decks that you can probably actually just go through all your sneak peek packs or some of the packs that you opened up from this set and pretty much build the entire deck because the core of this is pretty much just like commons and rares for the most part. And you can really just throw in a bunch of staple cards that you probably already have like desires and uh, terraforming and so on and so forth to basically build this deck along with a couple hand traps. It's very easy to make this deck. Glow Bulb is probably the only oddball card you might not have uh, from the main deck if you just don't happen to have one. Uh, but this deck is complemented really well by the World Legacy Engine, and uh, they all have really cool effects in that regard. So the stats are kind of average. I mean, you guys can see all their stats. They're quite negligible, but stuff like Axon and Spine are kind of cool because they, they allow you to interact with the opponent. So uh, that is my Crawler deck. Uh, I may show you guys the other version. The other version I was trying out, I was... I was kind of struggling with the extra deck, which is why I didn't want to show it to you guys. Uh, I was running stuff like uh, the One Ravine and Destrudo in here, so I could make uh, cards like Trishula. I could make uh, Formula Synchron with a Glope and the you know Scapegoat tokens. I was also able to make uh, a lot of other monsters. I was also able to make you know Black Rose Dragon, Ancient Fairy Dragon, so on and so forth. But um, I kind of want to just keep it short and sweet and simple for you guys. So that is my Crawler deck. If you guys happen to enjoy this video, please make sure to smack that like button. Uh, it's a fairly cheap deck for the most part to make. You guys can toy around with it if you guys would like to. And uh, that's basically it. If you guys want to check out my latest videos, make sure you guys are subscribed and enable that notification bell so you guys can be part of the Baby Dragon Squad. You guys can see my latest videos when they're released, such as this video and all my other future new videos. And then finally, I have a giveaway going on down below, courtesy of Gleam. You guys can win a playmat from Imperium Duelist. And then lastly, make sure you guys, if you really want to help the channel grow, YouTube is demonetizing a lot of my videos along with other content creators. So make sure you guys become a patron on my Patreon down below. You guys can win some cool rewards, mats, cards, etc. And you guys can duel me when I live stream. It's uh, just a privilege I'm giving to patrons. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. I'll see you guys. Peace out. I love you all. Thank you so very much for watching this video. And I hope you guys enjoyed my brand new crawler deck for the new Forbidden Unlimited list. Uh, take it easy, duelists. And always remember to believe in the heart of the cards. I'll see you guys next time.